it's my studio, Patrick Sackerson and Adam Nalti here today. Hello. We're going to go through the basics and introduction of using the Serex system. Uh, with us today we are using the uh, Prime Scan, which is the top of the line scanning uh, equipment we have for uh, the Serex system. Let's go through the system itself. So when you first get it, you can unbox it and set things up obviously and you know whoever's installing it for you is going to go through all the different components but let's just briefly look at what it includes Patrick. So yeah. main feature is the top screen. This is a big improvement on the previous Omnicam system. Uh, this is very flexible and it can be adjusted so either you're standing upright, you can use it almost as a typewriter setting or you can have it pretty flat like that which is how I usually have it when I have it chair side. Uh, the rollerball has been replaced now with a full touchscreen, so uh, the touchpad, so it's a lot more hygienic, very tidy, and it's very clean look, and I quite like that actually. And then, of course, we have the actual camera unit here. This is the important and expensive part that we don't want to drop excessively. Um, again, all at all. All, all at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, it comes with a detachable sleeve now, so you can have a disposable. Uh, or capable top if you like. Uh, for, for today's demonstration we're going to use the, the nice sort of metal finish top. Um, it's nice and light, it's a little bit big but it sits nicely in your hand and gives you good support. Uh, the big feature with this is that it's a much bigger camera uh, so we're going to get a, a nice field of view when you're scanning and we'll see that in a moment. I think the thing to keep in mind here is that the size of the scanner, um, although it seems probably bigger than some others, they, when you see some of the other bigger scanners, they, they're bigger but they're actually the field of view is quite small sometimes, whereas this, the field of view is really large, and not only in size and width, but also in depth. So the extra size of this makes a big difference not only to the speed at which you can pick it up, because it's capturing bigger frames as it moves around the arch, but also because the size of it then helps the software to tie each of those frames together more accurately, which results in a more accurate scan. Now, the other thing that's in this, which you don't have in, I don't think any of the other scanners, is it has its own onboard computer, which is part of the weight of it. Now, a lot of the other scanners are just a mechanism that picks up the 3D data, whereas in the prime scan, it is actually a little mini computer in there with an AI chip that will filter out different components. So as you're scanning, then it'll read the data that it's picking up and it should understand whether something has just popped into view or popped out of you, like a lip or soft tissue, so that you can then filter it out without you even knowing about it as it ends up in the software. So it's doing a lot of stuff without me thinking about it in the prime scan. So it's a bit of a clever unit. So, like we said, you don't want to be dropping it. That's no. a really important part. Now, Patrick touched on as well this tip. The tip, it looks like it's part of it. And at first, if you want to change it, you're thinking, how do I change it? There's no, there's no notch to release it. It's just a friction fit. It is actually very, very tightly fitted over it. Um, and then, obviously, we have this glass. You never want to touch the glass inside. You really want to leave that alone. We have a separate glass that's covering this to clean. It's completely self-contained so that you can clean this and wipe it down. Uh, if you have the disposable tips, then obviously you can use them or to clave them if you want to, depending on you know what your yeah. you know things are in your country that you're watching this. Uh, but um, for the purpose of this, like Patrick said, we're going to be using the main scanner tip, which just clicks back on that, and it's really tightly snug on. Yeah. So once it's on. It's pretty much on. You're gonna to have to force it off. Yeah. You know, gently popping it with both hands. So nice sealed unit, and I think that feels very solid as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it feels an expensive unit, and it is. I mean, it, it's not a cheap scanner, uh, but you know, like everything in life, the best things you know you pay for, um, and that's what this is. It's pretty much the the most accurate best scanner that we that we know about on the market. So. So I'm going to put that back for a moment and then we're going to go onto the home screen and the software. Before we go over that Patrick, I just want to touch on the actual unit itself. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Now, if you're aware of the, the older Omnicam, the Omnicam um, had a trackball. This doesn't have a trackball, it's got a touch pad. There's a lot of people that didn't like that when it first came out and it does take a bit of getting used to because 
you're controlling the mouse with the trackpad here or you're touching with, with the touch screen. Now, when you're using it, the thing to keep in mind is this is effectively a mouse, so you're using it to control. You've got your left click and your right click. But the most important thing is the touch screen is there for a different purpose to what you might use a mouse for. So when we're looking on later on, we'll be using the design, we'll be using the touch screen for adjusting things like shape, position, and that sort of thing. More accurate, more delicate things you use the mouse for, okay? So you will use both. It's not that it's duplicate because there's a touch screen and a trackpad. You will use both of them when you're using it. And the other two things that I want to talk about are on this side, you'll notice that compared to the Omnicam, there's no heater here. The heater is actually integrated with the camera now with the prime scan. On the older Omnicam and on the older generation of the AC unit, there was a heater here that you'd be able to lead to warm up. Either way, you still need to leave the heat up a little bit. You still want your camera nice and warm when you go to scan it for the first time. Because if you go to scan with a cold scanner, and if it's anything like it is while we're filming this right now, it's freezing. Yeah. Um, you don't want to scan cold because it will steam up. Yeah. So you need that to heat up. The other thing is it sticks out to the unit. So because it sticks out to you, you've got to be careful you don't bash it against things. If you bash it against things, you don't want to break this. It's an expensive unit. And the last thing I want to tell you is, what is this? What is this unit? It's basically a PC. Okay, how do I know this? Taking them all apart, aren't I? Yes. So I'm too much of a geek when it comes to uh, actually playing with these machines. But inside of this, we've got a frame inside of this nice, pretty white shell that is just a steel frame holding a Tau PC, the same as a Tau PC that we get from anywhere, with just a high power PC inside. Yeah. You can open this up. Worth remembering actually is when you open it, there are a few more connections you can do in here. Should we open so it up? Let, let's, open let's open it. it. Let's play. Let's okay. Play. You want to see this, yeah? Okay. So, so don't be afraid to open it. It's not sealed. Uh, it's just a little bit awkward to get to. So you can use it with your finger or a coin or whatever. Twist the lock in the top, and then you'll see this wire. This wire runs through everything here, so it's basically a unit that stops you from having, um, you know, avoiding the warranty of. So, so don't play too much with it, but there are uh, some extra ports here that we can use. You see this one important where we have the license dongle that sits in there. So I would always leave that in there because that's got a lot of value on. But there are some extra ports that you can use if you want to put a little backup drive in or something like that. Otherwise, if you just want to plug in a USB stick, we have the door at the back here. We've got two connections that you can use for an additional license or for a USB or whatever else you want to plug in there. I've got another license key there. Um, and then at the bottom here, this is your battery. So this connects through to the power. And what does that mean? It means that, look, this is the screen now. We can see the screen running. What's this? It's got battery active. I'm destroying things in the background, but still works. it still works. Okay, so the battery means that you can unplug it to move it around. Yeah. And there we go. Massive so bonus, actually. Back, yes. Some of these you can buy without the battery, but I would always say, well worth having the battery on there. Sorry, Mr. Um, that's it. Do you want I, to I remember to you to the recording? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's live, is it? It is. Uh, I would say that it's important to look after the battery, just like you look after any other phone battery or something like that. Uh, if you let it run completely flat, you might struggle to turn it back on again. Uh, so you've got to make sure you have it all charged up. Uh, otherwise, you have to go through a certain procedure to get that running. Today, though, we're going to look at the software side of things as well. So we're going to get this run again. I'm going to put it back on and make it look pretty again then. There we go. I would say as well, you know, when, when you're using this, it's worth um, having the uh, a backup drive to plug into one of the USB ports at the back. Yeah. Um, you can, if you use a USB um, like a little hard disk or what have you then, It'll, it'll, you can just set that so you back everything up in the evening. Uh, it's worth having simply for the fact that you've got peace of mind that if something happens, then you can um, just basically you know, back it up and plug that database back in. It's just one folder, well, so we'll all show you about it anyway. Because this is a PC, we can actually add things on here. Official recommendation is to not put lots of other softwares on, but a few things are, are useful. Um, I would have for instance, mesh mixer on here, and I would have a Dropbox on here so I can easily transform uh, files and then also send them on to other locations. We've uh, got shooting boxes. 
Uh, and we've got a tutor box on there as well, uh, which is handy. And the uh, um, main things we're looking at today are these. So we've got Serec, and here we've got the 5.2 version. Uh, and we've got the Serec Ortho, the Serec Ortho 2, and also we've got a Serec Connect. So, what's the differences here then? Well, the Serec 5.2 is the software we use to capture and design chair side, and then we can send that on to a milling unit and get it milled out chair side if you want to. Uh, if you want to do the Ortho side of things, the, the Ortho software is a separate software, separate license, looks very similar, uh, but it's got some nice features. That we will cover under a different video. Uh, and then we've got the Serec Connect, which is if you just want to use this as a normal scanner, completely standalone really, and then send it to your favorite lab. I think that's a really important point to consider as well, that you don't have to buy the Serec as uh, a Serec unit. People always think of a Serec unit as just this with the license to be able to use the CAT software, which it might not be. You might have bought your Serec unit as just the AC unit, which is basically exactly the same thing, it just doesn't have a software license to make it be able to run the Serec software. Serec is the CAD software. It isn't the Serec unit, the scanner. It is a Serec scanner, but it, the Serec scanner is the one component that captures the data, then we have the Serec software, which you could have or you might not have. So it's important to understand which of them. If you just buy the AC unit, then you won't be able to uh, open that even if you downloaded it or put it on. You need the license keys on your dongle. Yeah. You just get the connect software. And the only difference would be that the, your scanner would open up a very similar looking software. We'll open them up in a minute, we'll have a look. Yeah. Um, and then once you've opened them up, then we would be able to scan and then it would connect to the connect service to export the data wherever you want. Now, the Connect software is, is, is really important for uh, in-house as well as using to send to a lab because of their new uh, Cloud Connect Center. So the Cloud Connect Center, uh, which sits um, on your lab PC, is basically a service that you send um, your scans from your AC unit over the cloud and it can go to a lab or it can go to your lab PC and it means that you can export the data as an STL, an OBJ, tie it into Exacad, do loads of different things with it and a growing list of things as opposed to just designing straight on this unit. And you might want to do that. You might want to use it to, like I say, tie in with Exacad or export to 3D print the model. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Use so, the color features. Yeah, and use it in color because remember, an STL is colorless. A PLY or an OBJ has the color map over the top of the STL like a blanket. Okay. Thanks so I think that's it for this one.